o'clock rock, the Trump week, the week of Trump, the next chapter in the history of the world. We're still trying to make sense out of it. What does this mean? And to help us, we have Elizabeth Satoris from Chaminade University, who likes to talk about, mm, among other things, uh, sustainability. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Jay. Good to be here again. <laughs> Great to have you. Thank you for coming down. Very good. So welcome. are you in shock like everyone else? No, I prepared myself. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I worked hard on maintaining equanimity uh, through the election. And uh, I have to say, I, I felt very hollowed out right yeah. afterwards. And then the next day, too, I, I woke up in grief and shame. Yeah. Um, because I'm a planet person, I'm an evolution biologist. Um, I understand that we're going through our kind of adolescent crisis as humanity, and this is not unique to the United States. I've yeah. lived a lot in Europe, and and uh, they're going through their own turmoil. And uh, also, we had to face our shadow, and we can't really get on with things. It's it's like the matter of transparency. It came out first with with Enron and then the Catholic Church and then the WikiLeaks and you know our our culture is hanging out its dirty laundry so to speak. Yeah. We're facing our shadow again and again and this is the big deal uh, now. Isn't um, it destabilizing when all that happens when we have one oh, yeah. sort of scandal after another and one revelation negative mm -hmm. revelation mm -hmm. after another doesn't that make you lose confidence in the future when that happens no we're just getting to know ourselves <laughs> as uh, as the still adolescent humanity we are right now mm -hmm. and uh, my evolution biology shows that s young species are very creative and they multiply they build <coughs> growth economies they're very competitive and then there comes a point when it's too energy costly to keep elbowing everybody out of the way bumping off your competitors Can't and you start to cooperate with yeah, each other yeah. and oh my you suddenly are saving all these resources and building cooperation that's the mature phase and the Darwinian theory, which our whole economic system adopted, is only about the youthful part. And it doesn't give you a story for the mature part. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have, you know, all the hero's journeys stories that Joseph Campbell taught us uh, were in every culture. And what happens when, when Odysseus gets home to Ithaca, uh, he gives his sword to his son to help bump off the rest of the suitors who have been after uh, Penelope, was her name? Yes. <laughs> and, and, and then end of story. We don't know, does he govern Ithaca wisely now after all this experience? We don't have the story, the next story. But the title of this show tells it. The title of this show is can we continue to rely on federal support for sustainability? No, I mean the part that says community matters. Your big head. Ah, community the matters. Show is, the show okay. is community D double matters, Double entendre, right? too, yeah. And that's exactly what happens in the mature phase. You build community. You take care of each other. And nature is arranged in, in holons in holarchy. This is from Arthur Kustler. Uh, entities within each other. You have cells within your organs, within your organ system, your body, and then you're within your family, your community. It goes all the way up to the whole universe, right? And we have to make sure our economy works at all levels or it can't work at all. And we have built a global economy at the expense of local economies. And you see that here. Yes. You see that here. Yes. That's why we have homelessness. <clears throat> That's why there is no affordable housing for those who have no job. <laughs> can I, Elizabeth, can I ask yeah. you to go back with me? Go back, 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 back to Monday. <laughs> <laughs> the day before the Let's election, see. okay? Ah, uh, yes, BC. Uh, Monday. B -E. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, BT, before mm -hmm. Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> and and, um, and relive with me, and mm -hmm. you follow this because you're an evo evolution, evolution yes. sustainability person, um, how our evolution in sustainability was going then. Just, you know, forget the election yes. for a minute. Mm -hmm. How was it going then? Was it going the way you wanted? Was it going kicking, creaming, uh, kicking, uh, screaming, screaming into <laughs> maturity? Uh, yeah. Or was it stuck in some way? Uh, tell me your perception. Yeah. If, if you can remember. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, I, I use the metaphor of butterflies, um, where the caterpillar, you know, eats 300 times its weight a day and, and then gets so bloated it hangs itself up in, in the chrysalis. These imaginal cells, which are like stem cells that have been there all along, start coming out as the, as the caterpillar dozes. And they build the butterfly basically inside. And by the way, imaginal is a is a scientific word. It means it's for the imago. The the developing butterfly is called the imago, and those are imaginal cells. Ah, and so really we used to thing, think right? that yeah. everything would go downhill, and then the phoenix would rise from the ashes. Yeah. And the caterpillar story shows that the imaginal cells are building the new entity while the old ones are dissolving, falling apart. Yeah. And that's where we were on Monday, you know, the day before. We have loads of efforts, like our energy initiatives here in Hawaii. Uh, we, we, uh, we care about community in Hawaii. We act on aloha values uh, as much as possible. But we also have the behemoth, the caterpillar is still here and it's still putting condos up on the beach right? <laughs> yes, it is. while we're saying um, the sea level is going to come up and wash those away <laughs> so <laughs> you know it doesn't happen overnight there is no turning point there is a new culture being built within the old and eventually the old drops away so, so it, it's a metamorphosis so yeah a, a and, repeating and caterpillar, continuing metamorphosis caterpillaring is is trump's business Right, that's what he is. He's ah. he's a, a grab it all and and rake it in and build it, and he's going to now frack the country to death and r probably open up the coal mines again. Wait, and wait, and the world is a gas. You're jumping past Monday. Oh, oops, sorry. Okay, <laughs> okay we so were closing down the coal mines. <laughs> we were developing clean green energy. We were working very hard uh, with the the indigenous people at Standing Rock. Um, we hope to turn our country clean and green. Yeah, and I mean, there's a lot of aspiration about that. I, we, now, yes. we now know that it wasn't you know, universal, yes. but there was a lot of aspiration among the people you and I know in mm -hmm. our little world. Our little world defined by the media that we choose to look to, um, by the institutions we choose to believe, mm -hmm. or at least to some extent believe. And so it all seemed to be on a certain track, Mm -hmm. uh, but it wasn't perfect, was it? I mean, what, if oh, I'm no. looking Monday, yeah. Yeah. What, what were the challenges? What were the problems that would have worried you on Monday? Well, what, what worried me was that I had to vote for uh, a lady whom I have a lot of admiration for, but who was there. more Republican than Democrat. We haven't gotten there. It's Monday, no yeah. election. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking okay. about uh, the election. It's really between... A Republican and and an extreme rightist, um, and and where where are we in this picture? Uh, was was troubling to me. So um, we community builders, but okay, although, what, what although else? I have to say, Hillary has a very strong community caring. Yes, side. I agree yes. with that. But but where were we on Monday in terms of um, you know the the imp, 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 imperfection, the flaws? Mm -hmm. in the, the direction towards yeah. sustainability. Yes. Uh, there, were, there, were, there was resistance in Congress. Um, There's resistance among a number of people, a lot of mm -hmm. people in the country. Yes. Uh, some countries couldn't care less about it. What, what else? I mean, what kind of things? We had a beautiful, dignified couple in the White House who couldn't do what they wanted to do uh, and who was stymied by that Congress and Senate. And um, it was very, very difficult. And... Uh, I have to say they kept their grace and cool through it and are continuing to do so. But the, the hollowed out middle in America is the problem. We who want to bridge the divide can't, can't, the bridge is so big that has to be built now that uh, we've, we've hollowed out the middle class, right? And everybody's been driven into rich and poor, uh, miseducated and, and maybe miseducated at the other end too, mm -hmm. but a difference in, a huge difference in education. You know, kids learn what they're taught and um, in the environment that they grow up in. So we have this, this hollowed out middle and we have to sh face our shadows at the same time to grow up, to get through this adolescent crisis. So now we're deep in the crisis. Okay, okay. so uh, now I think we've yeah. examined how it was on yeah. Monday. Right. Um, now Monday comes, and mm -hmm. surprise of surprise. Well, uh, before I ask you that, 
What would you have expected? I think you've answered mm -hmm. this in part. What would you have expected from Hillary Clinton had she won? What, how would you have expected mm -hmm. her to take the mantle, mm -hmm. deal with some of the problems uh, you know, that Barack Obama has had, and go forward in sustainability? Yeah, I th well, I think she would be as she has been. She would be very strong on family, uh, community, social welfare, you know, the health care and social security, Safety things net. like oh. that. And she'd be a military hawk. <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> odd. It's an odd combination of <laughs> yes, positions. Yes, it is. Yeah. It is. It's a strange combination of things. Yeah. Uh, but I, she certainly wouldn't have reopened the coal mines, right? Yeah. And that's what I fear now. So she would have been, what, okay? Excellent? What? It would have kind of been business as usual mm. in a way, by the way. Happy 11-11. <laughs> <laughs> we are in memory today. And yes, I see of course. The, clock, Veterans day today, the clock at this moment is saying 11-11. So, yes. And it is Veterans Day. Yes. And we care deeply for all those who suffer everywhere. Yes. Uh, and more will now. And that, that was my grief, was for the earth and for all the people uh, that will suffer. What do, what do you mean? Under I, this administration. The earth, the fracking, the coal mines, the going, going back to the effects. dirty energy when we were so close to yeah. coming into green energy. Okay, so uh, now, had Hillary won, it would have been pretty much business as usual. Yeah. Okay, Trump comes in. Boy, is he in. It's a, I, I'm still not used to that. Um, and the question is, yeah, um, right. you know, well, A, he, he's, he hasn't been kind in his, in his uh, campaign comments about sustainability. No, uh, no. So he I, doesn't even believe in global warming, really. Yes. He's beginning to believe maybe, but it's perfectly natural. It has nothing to do with well, us. Do you think, uh, this is a hard one, and I yeah. don't know yeah. how I feel about it, uh, do you think he's capable of maturation, just as your maturation phenomenon for the world? I think he's an eternal child type. He's, at his, he's at, his, at his birthday party right now, so he's being real nice. He just got a lot of big presents. <laughs> 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 and those who voted will reap what they sow. I mean, uh, you know, I don't expect that he's had a character change uh, because he got elected. And we're going to have to work much harder now on community because community matters. Okay. All right. Community matters. We're going to take a short break. Yeah. We're going to come back and talk about how much harder we're going to have to work mm -hmm. and what can we do in order to yes. achieve some, some outcome, some desirable yes. outcome. We'll be right back. Aloha. My name is Carl Campagna. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. I hope you join us as we take a deep dive into biofuels in Hawaii over the coming weeks and the alternative fuel supply chains necessary for the local and global transition towards transportation fuel sustainability. We are going to invite in and we will have significant interviews with various stakeholders, including our producers, which are our farmers and our scientists, our conversion technologies, including Terviva, who we'll see in two weeks, as well as our consumers. Uh, in, within there, we're also going to have the investor groups necessary to make sure that this uh, can advance. So I do hope you join us as we explore our deep dive into biofuels in Hawaii. Community Matters with Elizabeth uh, Satoris uh, of Chaminade University a person who follows the evolution of sustainability. We're talking today, ultimately, the ultimate question is, can we continue to rely on federal support for sustainability after the Trump election? So, uh, you know, I mean, just on the changing your spots issue, you know, apparently Trump took down his uh, remark on his website that called for removing all Muslims from the country. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's relenting, maybe he's softening, maybe he's becoming more... May I say presidential? Well, he, he will have to make some concessions here, and he can kind of afford them now. Um, uh, he's going to be in, in trouble. I guess he's got 40 law cases coming up in this next 100 days that he has to get to. But um, <laughs> I, I, I don't expect to see... He, he claims he's going to take subsidies away from all energy. Uh, that private business shouldn't be subsidized by the government. That may be a good thing, 
uh, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, if he undoes that, I don't think that's all bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I've been opposed to those trade deals for a long time because they're not good for either the working people or the climate change uh, people. But we, we're going to go on building clean, green energy here in Hawaii, aren't we? And we have to go on with doing the good things we were doing, whether or not he gives us well, favors. Let's, let's talk about you know. one, and you mentioned it. Let's mm -hmm. talk about the you know, tax credits for solar. Um, if he removes those uh, energy credits, that's yeah. going to have a, a direct yes. effect on the market. Yes. Do you think the market can continue and everybody gird his loins and say, I don't care if I'm getting a tax credit, I'm no. going to build this facility anyway? Yeah, that? no, no, not at all. And, and I think the, uh, I like that he's going to do the FDR thing in a way of creating jobs by building infrastructure, but I immediately go to who's going to benefit the most are the big companies who are his best friends, <laughs> right, uh, who will be hiring the labor. So there are two sides to that picture again. And we have to work with what we have right now, Jay. And my favorite thing right now, um, because I'm an evolution biologist who, who teaches living economies, and I teach in the business school at Chaminade. And in the past year, four of us, Dean Schroeder uh, of the Business and Communication School at, um, at Chaminade, and Ramsey Tom, you've probably had him I, on as a we guest, have, yes. and Coila Clark. Mm -hmm. uh, they, we were a team of four. We designed four new courses called Island Business or Island Economies. And I'm just teaching the first one of those now called Ina. It's our relationship to our land, to our ecosystem, w us within our ecosystem, and how are we going to build that clean, green f future. Now, the other thing that's come down the pike that I'm very excited about is that Honolulu was now chosen by the Rockefeller Foundation to enter its program of 100 resilient cities in the world. And two years ago, the first cohort of 33 was chosen. Last year, another third of them, and this year we got in. What's a resilient city? And a resilient city, they had to apply to get this status, and we got, the, got in on the last cohort. Uh, our mayor wanted very much to have us in the program, and he's still our mayor, so there'll be continuity there. And uh, the two things that a resilient city has to demonstrate they can do is solve chronic problems, and Honolulu listed homelessness as one of its top problems, and build resilience against oncoming disasters. So this is so up my alley. I love this. <laughs> I, I want to work with it, and I want to build uh, an arm in, in Chaminade that can support City Hall as it develops these projects. And I particularly like to get everyone in Honolulu to know about this project, which they don't yet. Uh, the first meeting with the Rockefeller team is going to be <coughs> December 12th, and that's a closed meeting in City Hall. Um, but we can start letting people know and getting the kids in schools excited about this because let's ask little kids, how would you solve homelessness and things and get the families talking about this over the supper table and build some town hall meetings where anyone who wants to work on visioning the future of Honolulu can come. And I was at a meeting like this in Jacksonville, Florida, which is a comparable size city. Uh, back in 1991, 1,100 people showed up on that Saturday morning to stay all day in workshops and design the future of the city. So I think this is a wonderful opportunity that we can have to build our clean, green energy no matter what comes down the pike from the feds, mm -hmm. right? For us to build our local businesses up, to develop our own resources, to develop our food supply, which is on our agenda, uh, you know, it's crazy for us to be importing 95 to 99 percent of our food energy and so stuff. Is Rockefeller <laughs> uh, Institute Foundation, where, is that where they give us money? They're funding a resilience officer in City Hall, and they're claimed to be giving millions of dollars of services, in-kind services and consulting right. and stuff, to make sure we get this off the ground. Consulting on consulting this coordinator. I don't know yet because I'm not on the inside <clears throat> on this project. You know, I worry about it. You know, we have we have a homeless coordinator, and mm -hmm. we had him on a show one time. Yes. And I, 
And I said, well, you know, you got a staff that actually executes a plan? Yes. And he said, no, I have no staff. Oh. I just sit alone in a little desk on the fifth floor near the governor, and I'm, I coordinate. I mean, he calls, I say hi. Uh, and I try to get people, yeah. other people to do things uh, myself. And I said, gee, that's really not going to go anywhere, yes, in, in my view. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, I guess the question is, in this model, Rockefeller, mm -hmm. you know, provides a, 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 someone who can be coordinator or take a look at this and, and be well, sort we of... Well, our mayor chooses that person, I believe. Okay. It's not they don't choose Whoever. the person. Whoever. Yeah. And it funds the position and, and, and mm -hmm. it gives millions of dollars yes. of consulting and reports and data and whatnot. Um, is, is that model proven to be effective? This is a new model. This resilient cities is a new model, and I, I have a friend who's been working on it for a long time called Integral Cities. She has great handbooks. I love that word, Integral Cities. Yes, yeah. and you know, I think back to China. Uh, there's a Chinese delegation coming over, and I'm on the, the board of the Zhou Enlai Peace Institute, oh, sure. and uh, we're going to have an exhibit here in Honolulu, December 12th, 13th. And, uh, uh, when I was there in 1973, there was this huge push to get ordinary people to feel empowered and to be empowered to actually accomplish things. And we've already got so many people working in Hawaii, all over the state, all over this island. We've got people, there's a gal named Dottie up the coast uh, south of Laie who, who has organized everybody in resilience n n to know exactly what to do when the road washes out and gotten the rich people to agree that the, that the poor people can come up and camp in their estates if necessary and, you know, doing wonderful work like that. Without, without saying... Th if we can pull all these grassroots initiatives that are already happening together, we've got a huge workforce what, what, that what, isn't asking for money. Volunteer, you mean? Yes. Those Chinese people weren't paid. I saw the youth of a valley with 200 villages in a valley dying of drought for centuries it was dry there. And the young kids saying, we're going to bring water from, there's a river 70 kilometers as the crow flies across these mountains. And we're going to bring that water over here. We're going to going to build aqueducts and blast tunnels and, and get that water over here. And the government engineers, when they proposed it, said, are you crazy? There's no way you can do that. They had no money. They had no equipment. Right? They built kilns on the dry valley floor and smelted the iron in that red dirt and made chisels and pickaxes and shovels and, and uh, uh, hammers and hammers and chisels and pickles and pickaxes and shovels. <laughs> and I saw the black and white movie of them with homemade ropes swinging off these barren cliffs for the first toehold. And this is now the eighth wonder of the world. They did it. Against orders, these kids with no equipment and no money built Red Flag Canal, and that water came across. It's 144 kilometers of walls. The people were all chiseling the rocks and passing them up into the mountains. Extraordinary. I interviewed the Iron Girls Dynamite team. This changed my life, Jay, because suddenly I realized that motivation matters more than money. If you can get people, of course, when they're in a life-death situation, they're highly motivated. And we are going to be highly motivated when the beaches wash out. And I asked um, uh, Jim Hansen, our best climatologist, years ago, what will really wake the world up to climate change? And he said, when the sea level rises a couple of meters at once, this can yeah, happen. Yeah. Nature doesn't do nice, slow, predictable <coughs> curves. Well, does it? But doesn't is the, this is the frog in the water? You could have it the collapse of so ice shelves in Greenland and 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 the w sliding off Antarctica, I mean, it and suddenly rise we've got at giant once? tsunami. And when it goes away, the water is still two meters is it deeper. Possible, yeah. Yes, it's possible. Well, extreme w the storms Earth is are also possible. Big. Oh yes, oh yes, and we haven't seen anything yet. It's, I it's agree. Going to get worse I, I always it gets say better. every every beautiful day in Hawaii is one day closer to one of those storms. Mm -hmm. What we need is one, and you know. But you, but you say mm -hmm. when yeah. it's life and death, yeah. you know, it really yeah. means a lot to people. I, I you know, in in an island state like this, you get on a plane, you get out of town, <clears throat> and you solve the problem for yourself. Uh, the airports will be first to go if the water <laughs> is two meters higher. I guarantee you, there won't be any planes coming in, nor ships. Consider that. 
<clears throat> Consider but, that possibility that we could lose our airport and our peers at once. I have to go to I have to go to Safeway now and stock up right now. <laughs> but let me let me pose this to you because we have to get to our, you know, yeah. final question. Oh. Can we continue to rely on federal support for sustainability? And what I get, well, I'll ask you the question. Can yeah. we continue to rely on federal I support? don't believe in relying on the feds for anything mm -hmm. right now. Um, I want us to build our sustainability from the ground up okay, all over we this country we and especially in Hawaii. It. We have to motivate them and that's what I want to do. I want to be involved in having the school kids understand what it means to build within your community, to build your own jobs. Every time you shop at, at Walmart or big box stores, the money you earned here in Hawaii is going offshore. And we've de our economy relies on tourism and bringing new retirees into new condos. And that is so unsustainable, it isn't funny. You're not kidding. It is really So I serious. take the kids in a given school, uh, yeah. uh, grade school, high school, doesn't yeah. matter. And I say, <clears throat> my name is Elizabeth, and I want to motivate you kids to go out there no, and do... Don't tell them that. <laughs> Okay, motivate. <laughs> That's not how you motivate. <laughs> I come in all excited and say, wow, you want to see a great movie about what kids did somewhere, right? Well, that's true, the 1973 uh, <laughs> okay. China thing. But, you know, I, I'm going to run into some things. The yeah. first thing is uh, the teachers say that that's uh, after overtime. I'm not going to be around for that. Uh, the second thing is the union says, don't touch our teachers. Do you know what? When the, the, floods, is, come, the, when the floods come in, ain't no overtime, non-overtime. <laughs> Were you on Kauai by any chance when the big storm hit there and every pane of glass on the island was broken? My, my wife's family is Did Kauai. you think anybody was saying, I don't work overtime, as they were barbecuing <laughs> what was before the freezers, you know, rotted the meat, and, and for all their friends and neighbors and building for each other and... You know, Hawaii could be so great if we did bamboo architecture. It's spectacular these days. If you look at Southeast Asian bamboo architecture, the food variety, we could be doing green wave ocean farming, hanging so that tsunamis don't destroy it, right? Farms, we haven't even begun to explore the number of seaweeds that would make great veggies, and we get chefs going on making spectacular new meals. There is so much fun T to do. Tell them had. what you want them to do today. I want them today to know that we are growing up because invariably, you know, you die or you grow up. You, you, stop, you stop growing taller at, in adolescence and your body stabilizes, the cells don't keep on multiplying. Uh, it's inevitable. We, we have a choice. Do we want to grow up into a, a clean green economy where we can actually have fun or do we want to sit there and go under? Right? Well, you know, the, the interesting <laughs> thing about this is that the Trump election and this prospect of not having, uh, you know, federal support for sustainability does give rise to the notion that maybe we should be independent. Uh, we should find a way to do things ourselves the way, yeah. the way islands customarily historically have done. So there's a bright exactly. side to that. It's a hard side, mm -hmm. painful but I think there's a bright side. That's Elizabeth Santoris, Chaminade University, evolution biologist, as it were, uh, here on Community Matters, talking about federal support for sustainability. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Aloha, Jay. Aloha. <laughs>